Vingtaine, une femme de 24 ans named Marie Orliac a ouvert l'Université des Lettres Françaises à Marble Arch House, adjacent to Hyde Park. Là, elle a offert des cours de classes en français aux filles et aux femmes, as well as evening lectures pour le wider public. Orliac had first moved to Britain in 1907 to teach French and had built a solid network within the London's French community that numbered around 20,000 citizens at the time. Before 1910, she had organized several charitable and social events and run a branch of the Parisian Université des Annales, through which she hosted lectures in French and musical evenings in the London's wealthy hotels. In 1913, thanks to a partnership with the University of Lille in northern France, the Université des Lettres Françaises became the French Institute. The Institute included two secondary schools, created by Marie Dorliac during the First World War with the aim to offer an education in French to Belgian refugees who had come to Britain following the invasion of Belgium by the German army. In 1921, the Institute moved to Cromwell Gardens. It occupied rent-free a row of seven houses which belonged to the British Board of Works. The Institute activities focused on public lectures and social events for the general public, French language but also law and literature classes in French for students. By the late 1920s, the British government intended to Cromwell Gardens to build a national theatre. While the project was never launched, the Institute had to find alternative accommodation. In 1930, despite the world economic crisis, the French Parliament allocated generous funding to purchase the land on 15 to 17 Queensbury Place and 33 Cromwell Road and build a new home to the French Institute and its lycée. The construction of the Institute's buildings started in 1934 and was eventually inaugurated in March 1939 during the French President Albert Lebrun's official four-day visit to London. Mary, the Princess Royale, sister of King George VI, was also present. The main architect of the building was Patrice Bonnet, winner of the Grand Prix de Rome in 1907 head architect and conservator of the Palace of Versailles since 1925 and director of the Toulouse Fine Arts School since 1935. Sir Albert John Thomas, a fellow of the Royal Institute of the British Architects, conceived the Lycée building. The Lycée stands an imposing Georgian building, whereas the 17 Queensbury Place is an Art Deco building. Largely influenced by the Gothic architecture characteristic of some of Toulouse's buildings, and notably the mitted arches of Notre Dame du Tor in Toulouse, this red brick building stands in sharp contrast in a street lined with white row houses with repeating classing columns. Art Deco features are visible from the outside with geometrical patterns on the facade, lattice works on the columns, and the iron railing designed by French metal worker Raymond Supes. When entering the building, one notices ceramic animals that depict the graces of Roman goddess Minerva. The president of the London French Chamber of Commerce lobbied energetically and successfully for most of the materials used for the construction of the Institute buildings to be shipped from France. He linked his protectionist view with the aim of the Institute. According to him, premises constructed by French architects who had contracted French companies and used French materials would constitute a teaching material itself. Students at the Institute would only better understand France. For Bonnet, the building was to advertise France and embody his prestige. He, therefore, led an ambitious artistic program for the Institute. Ahead of the inauguration, he acquired for the Institute four neoclassical statues and was hopeful that more would be purchased over the years. Today, Rodin L'Age de Rhin is the only piece still currently at the Institute and is exhibited in the sweeping Art Deco staircase. Yet, as Bonnet intended it, the Institute Arts Collection has been developed with a tapestry by Sonia Delaunay and a 1950 bas-relief sculpture by Carlos Sarabezol. 
The library is a repository of thousands of books in French and a tapestry by Gustave Singer, woven especially for the Institute. Here, visitors can admire deco lampshades, art nouveau mirrors by glacier Max Ingrand, and stained glass windows, as well as a chapel-styled roof. This library is named after the Institute's longest-serving director, Denis Zora, who led the Institute throughout the Second World War. A close supporter of De Gaulle in the summer 1940, he was instrumental in introducing the general to London audiences via lectures, series, BBC broadcasts and press articles. Initially, the Institute also hosted administrative and intelligence offices of the Gaulle Free France movement. But soon, tension appeared between de Gaulle and Sora because of the divergent views. However, under Denis Sora's leadership, the Institute became a bastion of the resistance. In the summer of 1944, three bombs fell close to the Institut Francais. On the 11th of July, 33 Cromwell Road, which hosted staff accommodation opposite the Natural History Museum, was hit. Today, the Institute is open seven days a week and welcome all visitors for cinema screenings, open access libraries, French language courses, cultural events and kids' activities. Mm -hmm.